So I could spend an hour or more giving you tips about how to succeed with the Sinclair method based on my personal experience with the method and also as a recovery coach the last five years. But just for time's sake, I wanted to distill it down into three very basic tips, which these are all core components of the support program we have at Thrive for the Sinclair method. Tip number one, and this was huge for me, is to really define the reason why you want to change your relationship with alcohol. For me, this was a list I added to over time and I revisited that list almost on a daily basis just to constantly remind myself why I want to change my relationship with alcohol. For example, I really was starting to be fearful around the consequences of my drinking. I was doing riskier and riskier things and I literally had this fear about what my future held if I didn't make this change. So that was a really powerful why that kept me going on the method. And I also had more positive based whys. Like for example, I was really bored in the job that I had and I really wanted to do something that lit me up and that I had a passion for. So I was really hungry for a future when I wasn't hung over all of the time so I could actually apply myself toward a different career path. Those are just two examples. Like I said, I had a running list of all of the reasons why, big and small, that I wanted to change my relationship with alcohol. I think it's super important to define this why and revisit it on a regular basis. Number two that my doctor really drilled into me, and this is not medical advice, but it really helped me. My doctor told me to make compliance a non-negotiable. She was very adamant about that and really instilled in me how risky it was to drink without naltrexone once I started the Sinclair method uh, because it could really reverse progress. So from day one of this method for me, um, compliance with the medication was just a non-negotiable. I was not going to drink unless I was following the Sinclair method. And I feel like I stayed motivated to do that throughout the year I was on the treatment really because of again back to number one I had defined clearly all of the reasons why I wanted to change my relationship with alcohol. Number three is really to create a clear compelling vision for your future self when alcohol use disorder is a thing of the past. How will you feel? What will you do? Who will you hang out with? Um, what will people say about you? For me having this clear vision of really who I wanted to become when alcohol use disorder was no longer an issue for me helped me to start to almost embody that person in the present moment even though I wasn't there yet. So again, um, setting goals, really taking time to visualize that future from big things down to small things from, you know, I just wanted to feel healthier and more rested and not hung over and so I would meditate on what that felt like and then like I said earlier, I really wanted to have a career path that was super meaningful to me so I would envision what that would feel like. So I hope that's helpful. Just to recap, the three things that helped me to stay committed to the Sinclair Method was number one, defining my why and creating a long list that I was always adding to of the reasons why I wanted to change my relationship with alcohol. Number two was making compliance a non-negotiable. Um, that meant, again, I was never drinking unless I had taken naltrexone beforehand and I have to credit my doctor for instilling this into me. And number three, I was constantly envisioning what my future would look like when alcohol use disorder was no longer an issue for me. I hope these tips are helpful. As always, if you want more personalized day-to-day -day support on the Sinclair Method, start in our program. The link is in our profile. Bye for now.